Hello, my name is Marcus Onofre, and I will present a paper entitled Implementing Physical Models in Real-Time Using Partition Convolution, an Adjustable Spring Rebuild. It is a paper I wrote together with Sylvain Willemsen and Stefania Serafin from Orbach University. The project started from the desire to implement a digital spring reverb effect where one can change the physical parameters of the spring in real time. This would extend the possibilities of traditional spring reverb tanks where the springs are fixed and cannot be easily changed. In essence, it would allow for multiple spring reverbs into one interface. In the following parts of the presentation, I will describe the helical spring model used to simulate the vibrations of the different consider springs. Here I will highlight why a direct real-time implementation of this model is impractical and describe how we tackle these challenges in our project. Finally, I will present the interface we built and show it in action in a demo video. The project is based on the work of Stefan Bilbao and Julian Parker, particularly the paper entitled A Virtual Model of Spring Reverberation, published in the IEEE Journal on Transactions on Audio, Speech, and Language Processing. Here they describe a helical spring model where the longitudinal and transverse displacements of the spring are coupled. The system is scaled such that the springs are characterized by three main physical parameters. Kappa, which is a measure of stiffness, Q, which is a measure of the curvature of the spring, and gamma, which describes the longitudinal wave, uh, wave speed in the material. Various combinations of these parameters change the dispersive properties of the springs, and therefore their reverb quality, as I will describe in the following. Bilbao and Parker proposed to solve the system and simulate the displacement of the spring under various excitations using finite different time domain methods. They propose an implicit scheme which can limit the number, the numerical dispersion and produce more accurate simulations. For more details on this, uh, please refer to our paper. There are two main limitations to the simulation approach. The first is that the free parameters of the implicit scheme need to be tuned to better match the model dispersion, as you can see in the figures on the right. This is done based on an optimization procedure which needs to be recomputed for each spring configuration. And then the second is that being an implicit scheme, a large matrix inversion is necessary in the update equation. This makes a direct real-time implementation using this simulation approach impractical. We therefore decided to calculate the response of different springs offline and generate a database of impulse responses. We vary the spring parameters such that we get impulse responses with different audio qualities. We kept kappa constant and varied the curvature parameter which governs the transition frequency at which the, springs, the, at which the spring changes its dispersion characteristics. You can see these two dispersion zones in the spectrogram below. Um, furthermore, we vary the wave speed parameter which governs the density of the echoes in the impulse response. This resulted in a total of 54 impulse responses. Now, having these impulse responses, we can use convolution to blend some real-time input sound with them and therefore add the spring reverb quality to some dry signal. Since the impulse responses we used uh, were quite long, about two seconds in length, a partition convolution approach was needed in order to reduce the latency in the system. We use the algorithm proposed by Armeloni and others, which is highlighted in this block diagram. An important feature that we wanted for our implementation was to be able to switch smoothly between different impulse responses without clicks or audio dropouts. This was done by preloading all the impulse responses at startup and when transitioning from one impulse to another, essentially computing the convolution for both impulses and fading in between them. In order to embed the effect in a physical device, we decided to go with the Bella platform, particularly the Bella Mini Toolkit. The Bella is a single board Linux computer dedicated for high quality audio with minimal latency. We made a multi-thread implementation of the partition convolution algorithm in C++ in the Bella IDE. After various investigations regarding the filter size, we settled on 8,192 samples with a 50% hop size, which resulted in a latency of uh, 279 milliseconds at a standard sample sampling rate of 44,100 Hz. This is rather high, but being a reverb effect, which is more tolerant to pre-delay, we found it acceptable. The interface is wired on a standard breadboard and embedded in an ABS box. Regarding parameter mapping, we used the Bella Trill Square, 
which uh, is essentially a touchpad to map the to map the different impulse responses. The horizontal direction of the trill square is mapped to the gamma parameter, which changes the echo density, while the vertical direction is mapped uh, to the Q parameter, which changes the dispersion zone transition frequency. We then added three potentiometers to control the global volume, then the dry wet mixture of the output signal, and finally the length of the impulse response used in the convolution algorithm. This could essentially control the length of the reverb. Finally, we embedded a microphone in the side of the box and the toggle switch, which could change between either some external input or, uh, or the microphone input. Using the microphone as a source signal, one can then tap or scratch the box and transform the interface into more of an instrument than an effects processor, which uh, hopefully you will see in the demo that I'm going to show. Hello, I'm going to make a short demo video for the Spring Reverb interface we developed for our SMC paper. Uh, you can now hear me through the microphone, which is embedded in the side of the interface. Uh, I will now uh, put on my headphones and turn on the dry wet knob, and you will start to hear the reverb effect. Uh, then I will change the spring parameters by moving my finger along the two axes of the trill sensor. Uh, right now, the length of the impulse response is turned all the way up, and I will play around with that parameter as well. Um, yeah, so now you can start to hear the reverb effect. Uh, you can see that there's a long tail. I can tap. I can also um, turn the length of the impulse response a bit down. some music from my phone. Uh, it's just an online radio station. Um, first I will play it for a bit without uh, the effect and then I again will turn the dry wet knob. Uh, Thank you for your attention and uh, looking forward to your questions. Bye-bye.